What's going on everybody? This is James Jackson. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk more about audio. Now, earlier in this week I did my review, or at least part one of my review, of the Comica VM40. Love the microphone itself, it, even though I had some issues with it. But if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because we're going to be talking about shotgun microphones and also how in certain environments, which is kind of ironic because um, I've got um, someone upstairs vacuuming in the middle of this video. So this is a perfect, uh, definitely on subject. What do you do when in a situation where the audio is not necessarily the uh, best case scenario, like someone vacuuming? Or, or how about uh, you are interviewing doctors and patients in the middle of an open atrium um, well, with people walking by all the time in the background and also there is construction work going on in said hospital. That's exactly what I had to endure last summer when we were doing a video campaign. This video was mainly a campaign to spread more awareness about familiar hypercholesterol. So we basically sat down and did some talking interviews and did some cover shots and some B-roll as well as uh, putting into some other footages, some archival footages to make the project work. And ultimately it was very happy. In fact, the, uh, they actually asked us back to do another project, which we're still waiting uh, final confirmation on if that's happened. So fingers crossed on that. Today, I kind of want to just go into sort of the techniques that I use because again, it was a chaotic uh, setup there again. There was, uh, you hear people walking in and walking out. Um, you had construction on the floor above. They actually were originally wanted to put us on the first floor where it was the most heavy congested traffic. And obviously me looking at it, I was like, no, we need a little bit more seclusion. Um, even though we didn't get the option that I wanted, this was the best case scenario that I could get for this shoot. How about I first start off with showing you the final product or at least a snippet of it. So here's the final product of ultimately what we did. So check it out. Did I go to all of these visits, which I know I did, right? I check every box, I go every year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial, but then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm gonna help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point of, of my father. Now, as you can see here, it did pretty damn good of sort of getting all that out. So what did I use? Well, I definitely had, there's a special tool in DaVinci Resolve. I've talked about it a lot. It is the voice isolation. Um, and it really does make a world of a difference. However, there are other tools that I actually ended up using that actually helped elevate and help use. And that's kind of what I want to use today because some of you are probably looking at it like, hey, uh, look, I don't have Resolve Studio and I don't know right now, time's a little rough. I don't know if I can fork out the $300 to get DaVinci Resolve. Totally understand that. So uh, if you can't do DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to show you some techniques that you can do in the, that's also included in the free version of DaVinci Resolve that could definitely help you out. But I will still suggest that if you can get it with these AR audio tools, they make such a huge difference. But without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and dive right into the video. So as you guys can see here, we're now in DaVinci Resolve. We got a snippet of the clip right here. So we got two audio sources here. So this one uh, is the boom and this one is the lav. So we're just going to go with the boom first and we'll see how this sounds. I check every box, I go every year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial, but then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm gonna help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point of, of my father. Okay, so as you guys can see, there's a there's a there's a lot going on. There is um, there's 
there's a door slam, you can hear sound in the box chatter, uh, you can even hear a little bit at the end that there's that construction that is going on the floor above us. So, well, we got a lot to work with. Now, we do have the, the uh, lav mic, which is the Rode uh, Wireless Pro, which I do love, and also it is 32-bit float. Uh, play you know, I gotta check every box, I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding. So I, I do like this. I do like how it sounds. However, I also get, I'm getting more of the jewelry in this, uh, in this version uh, compared to the boom mic. So I think I'm going to go with the boom mic um, in terms of trying to clean this up. We've already normalized uh, both of these. Um, so what are some ways that we can fix this and clean this up? So there's two things that I think if whatever audio, if you're trying to clean up or sort of tidy up the audio, there's two steps that I think you should do. And both of them are like right here at the, uh, both of them are like right here. And that is the, uh, the compressor as well as the EQ. We're gonna start with the compressor. So, I'm going to run this back a little. And what I love about DaVinci Resolve and how it does the compressor is it, it, it gives you a visual store, a visual, um, a visual e uh, explanation of everything that's going on. So if I hit play. I got to check every box. I go over a year. So you it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do or what could I have done? So as you can see, there's like, there's dots and lines of where the audio is coming, which, which is really great. Um, so if we go over here, we got two options. We got an expander, we got a gate. The, if we turn this on, what the expander does is sort of give you a little bit more control. To prevent this, to not knowing that the there was range. nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial, but then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm gonna help her. In and the goal of this part of the of the um, the gate is to and the expander is to basically take all but as much as the lower parts that is not her voice take that part out. Now, given the extremeness of because of how um, how uh, all the different noise, I'm going to go with instead a the gate, which is going to be a very a more extreme version of this. So in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to. So the, the point is, is that when she stops talking, this thing should drop and try to take as much stuff out, but we want to do it as naturally as possible so it doesn't feel weird. Um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point. So right now it's a bit too, there's too much, so we want to pull the threshold back. Point of, of my father. Now the next part is the, compre is the compressor part. And this part is, it's going to do the reverse of what the expanded the gate does, which is it, it takes out the higher end portions. So I got to check every box. I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it moved for it moved towards again. I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to uh, to the point of of my father. There. All right. So. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to play it back so you can see the difference. So here's with it off. I got to check every box. I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? And here's what it's on. Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point of, of my father. So it's now much, much better. And the reason why we want to sort of do, it's much better, it's still not there. We still got a bit away. That's where the EQ comes in, but it's much better. And the reason why we are um, doing this is because we want to make sure that this, we want to make sure that we can try to get rid of as much of the issue as possible before we go to the AI solutions. Because 
if you told what the AI solutions did, it sort of takes in more stuff that it doesn't necessarily need to take. And then you can sort of fine tune it. So it's, it's about control. So the next thing we're going to do is get the EQ. So. You know, I got to check every box, I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking. So what we're going to do is to, uh, put this uh, file so we can talk uh, some stuff. What did I not do? Or what could I have done? And then we're gonna t and then we're gonna kill the lower half too. Done to prevent this, not knowing that there was nothing I could do. Understanding now her diagnosis, so that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it moved for it moved towards again. I'm gonna help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to, um, so that she doesn't get to. Uh, and now the thing that I'm going to be trying to do with the others, with, especially with three and four, is I'm going to try, I'm going to crank this all the way up, these two all the way up, because these Q factors basically show how much of the spread that they will try to cast. And what I'm going to do is try to see if there's any noise or any sort of thing that I want to sort of take out. I got to check every box, I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why. Right there. That's where I want. So with that, now I'm going to take three, and then I'm going to do the reverse, and I'll pull this down to take that port out. I want to do the same thing with four for the high end. So let's bring this back. I got to check every box. I go over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards again. There it is. So, so we found it on the high end. And then again, we're going to bring that gain and we're going to bring this down not all the way down just enough and then we can always bounce and then what i typically like to do with the other two normally you can lift it up but sometimes for these i tend to try to like okay i want to raise up the 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 lowers to sort of counteract so let's play this back and let's hear how it sounds i gotta check every box i go over a year so it was more so what i was thinking what did i not do or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point of, of my father. And that sounds definitely better. There's still, there's still a lot to work with. And I'm probably going to, and I'm just going to go back. So this is going to be a little cut, but I'm going to just go back to the compressor and sort of tweak it out a little bit more. And then we'll, when I come back, we'll be uh, back to, we'll get to the next stage, which is to the studio version plugin with the AI plugins. So now we have, uh, now we have essentially done the compression, we've added, we've done the EQing, we could go in and do some noise reduction, but given this sense, I think it will be a little bit more messy. So now we're going to go with into the AI tools, which there's two particular ones that are going to be very helpful. I, the, now the one I used for this project was the voice isolation, which is right here. And what this does, and because we sort of cleaned it up a little, we don't have to be as aggressive now with this. So I'm going to show you just at 100%. Box, I go for a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to, uh, to the point of, of my father. Now, look how much awesome and cleaner that sounds. Now... It, it has a little, it, it's being a bit more aggressive, and this is why doing the compressor, uh, sorry, doing the compressor 
and the EQ was important because we took out a lot of that extra with that made it a lot easier for the voice isolation. So now we don't have to have the voice isolation be as aggressive. So I'm going to bring it down to 55 and let's see how it sounds. You know, I got to check every box like over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand. All right. So I still hear a little bit more of the background. So I'm going to bring it up to 65. And 65 is typically, uh, 65 is typically, if, if I can, be the highest I want. Because beyond 65, it tends to get a bit more aggressive. If I can, I could go, I would like to be like in the 10s or 15 with it. Just, just, just enough to, to take it out. Let's go back and let's hear it now. I got to check every box like over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to um, so that she doesn't get to uh, to the point of, of my father. Now, that that sounds great and once i layer everything with music uh when i layer with music and and put in some room tone just to sort of help things out a little bit make it a little sound a little better th this is great the other one that we could do is the dialogue separator which will pull where it comes a voice and you can take the ambience in the background voice so let's bring the background voice down and then let's uh, bring the ambience down just a little bit. And let's see how this sounds. I got to check every box like over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do, understanding now her diagnosis. So that was the initial. But then piecing the things together, um, it, moved for, it moved towards, again, I'm going to help her in this journey to be preventative and have her really understand why she has to. Um, so that she so it does a good job and you can even mute it so if we were just to like just mute both of these um, but it's not perfect and I kind of and in this situation I, I like the voice isolation better you know, just check to, every box like over a year so it, mute, it was more look. so what I was thinking what did I not do or what could I've done to prevent this not knowing that there was nothing I could do understanding now her diagnosis so in this scenario i don't really like it given the fact that it's it's getting it's getting aggressive towards her and it's being and it's behaving more towards her and that's the reason why i don't like this and why i like the voice isolation because even the voice isolation is a bit more aggressive it's it feels like it's a does a better job at separating her voice from everything else. I got to check every box like over a year. So it was more so what I was thinking, what did I not do? Or what could I have done to prevent this? Not knowing that there was nothing I could do. Like you see how much cleaner it sounds with the voice isolation versus the dialogue separator where it doesn't feel like the, di the dialogue separator is great if you want to still keep the ambience and you want to just bring down the background just a little bit. You want to bring down the ambiance just a little bit. You want to still have that in there. But if you're trying to just completely get rid of it, the voice isolation is better, but you got to be careful with it. It's because it will, it, it can be aggressive to where it wrecks it. But the beauty of the voice isolation is that you can really sh tune down it if you want to. And as you guys can see, it's real, even at like 15 is aggressive, but just how much you want to get rid of it while before breaking it. Uh, that's sort of your choice. Anyway, guys, this is for me. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to see more of these resolve tutorials and how you can, uh, get rid of sound or do some audio tutorials or color grading tutorials, leave your comments down below. I would love to do it. I am a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer, so I can definitely guys help you guys out with that. Let me know. Leave your comments down below. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, everyone.